A few weeks ago, I pulled up to the door of my apartment building on my bike and noticed something was wrong. The lobby was dark. I walked inside to check it out. Yep, the power was out. This was more than annoying. The elevator, the only easy way of getting my bike up to my apartment, was dead. Next to the elevator were the stairs, all six flights of them leading up to my apartment. So I picked up my bike and started climbing. After the first few flights, my mind started to wonder. I started to think about how integral the invention of electricity is to our lives and how it is fundamental to the function of many other inventions that help make our lives better. When I finally arrived in my apartment, half of the useful items in my apartment weren't working. I had no lights, no air conditioning, the food in the fridge was beginning to spoil. But worst of all, I had no Wi-Fi. What did all of these inventions missing in my dark apartment have in common? Each one is made possible by the amazing invention of creating, transporting, and using electricity to modernize the world. All these inventions would be hard to imagine without the invention of electrification. Electrification is a type of invention that is known as an enabling technology. An enabling technology is an invention or innovation that makes possible other inventions or reduces the development required for other inventions. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my TED Talk. My name is Will Jenkins. I am many things. I am a son, a brother, a student at ASB, a tennis player, a teacher, and an inventor. Today, I would like to talk to you about human knowledge and the inventions which come with it, focusing on the feedback loop of enabling technologies which have produced our modern world. I also would like to share with you some story, uh, share some stories with you about how I've been able to create some inventions of my own through the application of enabling technologies. And finally, I'll ask you to consider what innovation means for our future and for the future of the planet. Charles Duell, the commissioner of the U.S. Patent Office in 1889, is widely quoted as having made perhaps the least accurate prediction of all time when he said, everything that can be invented has been invented. Yet, since the time of his supposed claim, mankind has invented airplanes, radios, rockets, solar panels, nuclear power, television, computers, antibiotics, open heart surgery, and the internet, just to name a few. Even the bike that I was lugging up the stairs required industrial processes and complex factories to make. Our entire modern society has become grounded in and dependent on technological developments, which have snowballed in an exponentially increasing array of inventions since the short-sighted prediction of Mr. Duell in 1889. Right now, we are at a pivotal time in human history, a time when the pace of invention and change is accelerating faster than it ever has before. As you can see in this graph of patent numbers over time, the slope of the curve in the last 10 to 20 years has skyrocketed. But why is the pace of invention so rapid? I believe that our world is changing so quickly because of what I would like to call the invention feedback loop. But what do I mean by this? I suspect that many of you have heard the saying that necessity is the mother of invention. That's because when people have a need or are forced to solve problems, they are more likely to invent a solution than if the status quo is sufficient. Those inventions then create tangible benefits that address the need or solve the problem. However, inventions also bring unexpected additional advantages. These additional advantages are new enabling technologies, which can be used as building blocks for future inventions, other inventions that would not be possible without the support of the previous invention. Thus, this makes invention the father of invention. The scientific knowledge gained through the process of creating one invention can then be used to develop and enable multiple other inventions, and this process continues on and on and on. I believe that these feedback loops are what is accelerating invention today. I have seen this feedback loop play out in my own inventions where I have set out to solve a specific problem that the world faced, making use of enabling technologies that others had invented to ultimately succeed. The first problem that I set out to solve sparked my ongoing interest in solving environmental problems. Yes, 
Fuzzy yellow tennis balls did indeed get me interested in landfills. I'm a competitive tennis player, and the only thing that you go through more of than water are tennis balls. You see, tennis balls gradually lose their balance over time and must be replaced. Unfortunately, separating the ones that have lost their balance from the others is not that easy, and this leads to many flat but not worn out balls clogging landfills. I realized that there must be a better way and set out to invent, design, and build a machine to automate the expensive process used by many tennis centers. The result of my effort was this, my patent pending automatic tennis ball sorter. I created this invention to help keep some of the hundreds of thousands of tennis balls out of landfills every year. It is my invention, but my invention relies on the inventions of hundreds of others to function. My machine works by automatically dropping balls onto a rebound surface and then uses carefully arranged light beams to measure the rebound height and finally automatically sorts the balls into the correct bucket based on the rebound height. The machine I designed made use of photovoltaic cells, transistors, and microprocessors, just to name a few other inventions. My work was built on the inventions of others before me. But their inventions didn't just come out of nowhere either. Their inventions, just like mine, were also built on the work of thousands before them. I am positive that when Edmund Becquerel created the first photovoltaic cell back in 1839 at the age of 19, he had no idea that his invention would be built upon and improved by hundreds of other inventors and ultimately end up as an integral part of another teenager's automatic tennis ball sorter in 2021. My sorting machine uses photovoltaic cells to determine which light beams have been blocked by the ball and therefore register how high the ball has bounced. Without these photovoltaic cells, I would have had to invent some other way to automatically measure the rebound height, a process that would have slowed down or possibly even derailed my invention process. Another unlikely trio to help me revolutionize tennis ball sorting is William Shockley, Walter Brayton, and John Bardeen. Yeah, these guys. Not exactly your typical tennis players. However, their Bell Labs invention of the transistor enabled a lot more than just my tennis ball sorter. This essential technology revolutionized the world through its contribution to the invention feedback loop. Transistors are the invention that enabled microchips, microprocessors, and everything that uses them to function. In our modern world, this is almost everything and anything electrical, from computers to appliances to cars, and even to automatic tennis ball sorters. They have changed the way we do things, which in turn have created additional needs and eventually spawned even more new inventions. Here, the loop continues on. I also use a microprocessor to control all aspects of my machine. The microprocessor turns on the motors that drop the ball. The microprocessor receives and interprets signals from the photovoltaic cells. And the microprocessor turns on the motors to ultimately route the sorted balls into the correct bins. In fact, the transistor and the resulting microprocessor is such a powerful enabling invention, it has enabled many of my other inventions, such as the low-cost ventilator I co-invented with my brother during the early weeks of the COVID-19 pandemic to save lives when patients were dying due to a ventilator shortage. Just like my tennis ball sorter, our homemade ventilator contained several components which made use of various enabling technologies. In this case, this included a PWM motor controller and an electric motor that was originally created for a very different purpose. Yep, the electric motor we used was originally designed to run the windshield wipers on a Ford F-150 pickup truck, but it worked perfectly to pump the air in our ventilator. I've also used electric motors in many of my other inventions, such as my chimney cleaning robot. Today, electric motors are available in a huge range of sizes, speeds, and powers, and are a common tool in an inventor's toolbox. Electric motors have also enabled more inventions through the invention feedback loop than we can count. They're powering home appliances, such as vacuum cleaners and refrigerators, electric cars, and even machines that can make other machines. I suspect that when Thomas Davenport first created a usable electric motor in 1834, he probably knew that he had something big, but he is unlikely to have imagined the true scope of his invention or the other inventions it, it would have enabled. 
Without his invention, our low-cost ventilator would simply have been impossible. Later, in 1975, Bob Amano added his own contribution to our ventilator when he invented an enabling technology that, again, through the invention feedback loop, has revolutionized motor control and has created a multi-billion dollar industry. His invention was the Pulse Width Electric Modulation Motor Controller, or PWM Motor Controller for short. This allows other inventors to efficiently control the speed of an electric motor by rapidly pulsing the power to the motor on and off. Since 1975, PWM motor controllers have found their way into everything from sewing machines to light dimmers to train locomotives. My brother and I used a PWM motor controller to allow the hospital staff to vary the rate at which our ventilator delivered breaths to the patient. Thankfully, the early ventilator shortage lessened quickly as quarantines reduced the cases and existing manufacturers ramped up production. So, in the end, although our low-cost ventilator was never used on a patient, we are proud to know it could have possibly saved lives if called upon. While some enabling inventions and technology like the PWM motor controller or the photovoltaic cell are obvious in hindsight, when they were first invented, few understood their full potential to change our world. However, other enabling technologies like the internet, are more obvious game changers. When high-speed computers were first connected around the world and opened to the public back in the mid-90s, many knew that the world was about to change, and it certainly has. The one new enabling technology that I'm most excited about right now is called DeepMind's AlphaFold, which has the makings to dramatically accelerate additional inventions through the invention feedback loop. DeepMind is an artificial computer intelligence program developed by Google that has created a digital neural network that uses a self-learning process to solve complex problems. AlphaFold was designed to use DeepMind's AI technology to solve a problem that has been hampering scientists for over 50 years, which is how a protein folds. Our cells create proteins through a multi-step process which culminates in a string of amino acids folding into a three-dimensional protein. The final three-dimensional shape of a protein is significant because it determines how the protein functions. The problem is that the proteins are so small that we cannot easily observe their three-dimensional shapes. The AlphaFold invention uses machine learning to accurately predict the protein's final 3D shape. This information will enable scientists and other inventors to identify useful proteins for medical purposes and will ultimately enable inventors to engineer machines at an atomic level. It is difficult to even predict the various types of inventions this new technology will enable, but scientists are already claiming that AlphaFold is on the brink of revolutionizing many aspects of medicine and biological sciences, not only helping us to cure diseases, but also potentially helping us to mitigate environmental problems. Here, the invention feedback loop strikes again. Isaac Newton famously once said, if I have seen a little further, it is because I am standing on the shoulders of giants. Inventing something that solves a real-world problem is awesome. But like Newton, I realize that when I invent something, I am standing on the shoulders of all the other inventors who have come before me. Their inventions have become enabling technologies that have made my inventions possible. Without their inventions, my own inventions would have been much more difficult or even impossible to create. I plan to continue my journey of creating inventions that can fix real-world problems like ventilator shortages, greenhouse gas emissions, and water pollutions. Our world is indeed facing many serious issues, but I believe that we can solve them by building upon the work of others. Human inventions have been and will continue to be the solution to our world's problems. By working together and sharing our knowledge, we can improve our situation. Together, we can solve the problems that would be impossible to sh solve alone. Together, we can invent the future. Thank you.